Hallelujah. 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 How many people like, you know, how many people are excited that this is the crux of our rejoicing? That the man that died came out of the grave. That is the message. That is the source of our rejoicing. That's why we give God praise. We rejoice in Christ because he was raised from the dead. Come on, shout hallelujah. Much more, not only the fact that he was raised from the dead, but we as well. We came out as new creations. Come on, shout amen. amen. Come on, shout amen. amen. Say, I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I am born of God. I am born of God. Shout hallelujah. Like I always tell you, our songs must be consistent with our believing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our songs must contain the fact that we have eternal life. Our songs must contain the fact that we are forgiven. Our songs must contain the fact that we are the righteousness of God. Our songs must contain the fact that we are the beloved of God. Our songs must contain this fact. Can we get a believing amen? Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, you know, the, when we talk about the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, you are, you are, you are this, this, this is the realm of the Holy Ghost. Can I get a believing amen? amen? This is the realm of the Holy Ghost. The realm of the Holy Ghost. You see, you see, let me tell you something. You know, in meetings like this. When we are shouting about, you know, people always say, what's wrong with them? Why are they shouting? Why are they rejoicing? What, what's, what's happening? <laughs> it's in meetings like this where we shout about the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Someone can come in with a big tumor in his body, and after the meeting, he realizes it's gone. You know, because in meetings like this where the Holy, when Jesus Christ is exalted in his proper position, the Holy Spirit has his free course. Can we get a believing amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All right, we continue our teaching. Like we told you, five irrefutable facts of the gospel. Five irrefutable facts of the gospel. And like I told you last week, these are not facts that you can argue with. They are not facts that you can dispute. They are absolute statements, absolute facts. Meaning there is nothing anybody can do that can change it. They are, fa- they are facts of the gospel. They would never change. Hallelujah. How many of you can remember the first fact of the gospel? Can you remember the, we, see, we heard it last week? The first fact of the gospel. Yeah. The first fact of the gospel is that Christianity began at the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. When did Christianity begin? Church, talk to me. You know, people, people, if I know grace friends, people very well, they're already thinking about the fact number two in their head. He's going to ask us. He's going to ask us. The fact number one, which is not contestable, is the fact that Christianity began at the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The very time Christianity started was when the Holy Ghost was poured out upon them in Acts chapter 2. Meaning before that time, like we would hear much more in this service, before that time, nobody was born again. I told you Jesus had disciples, he had 12 of them, you know, and they did miracles in his ministry. Jesus and his disciples did miracles in his ministry. Mark 6 from chapter, if you read the the, the book, you see they did miracles. Luke 10 from 1 to 19, they did miracles. Matthew 10, 1 to 10, they did miracles. Luke 9, 1 to 5, they did miracles. So these guys, the disciples of Jesus, they did miracles, but they were not born again. Nobody was born again until Jesus Christ came out of the grave, went to the Father with his offering. What was the offering of what was the offering that he went to the Father with? Himself. What did he say? Himself. He is the offering. Hallelujah. He went to present himself. You remember the story in John chapter 20, I think verse 17, when he met Mary Madeline, who hugged him. And then he said. Don't touch me any longer. I am going to the Father. I am going to my Father and your Father. 
You know, before then, Jesus Christ was speaking very monosyllabically in such a way. He would say, my father is pleased with me. He would say, I am from the father. But when he came out of the grave, something had changed in his tone, in the way he would speak. He would say, I'm going to my father and your father. My God and your God. Can I get a believe in amen? And so he went to the father and he presented himself and justice was served. Can I get a believe it? Amen. Amen. After justice was served, the Holy Ghost, it became level for the Holy Spirit to come into human beings. And that's where we see in Acts chapter 2, the first set of Christians to ever emerge, emerge in that meeting. In Acts chapter 2. Can I get a believe it? Amen. Amen. Before then, nobody, nobody, nobody was born again. Amen. And this means a lot of things, but we don't want to share in those dimensions because we had already shared it on it last week. The second irrefutable fact, what's the second irrefutable fact of the gospel? Why are we talking like we're mourning? A man gets saved only when he hears the gospel. And what he hears must be specific. Hallelujah. What he hears must be what? What he hears must be what? I told you last week because we are raising people to know the truth. If you come and say, for example, you have a meeting, a Christian meeting, for example, and you say, you know what? 15 ways to be a success. 15 ways to be rich. And you start talking about a lot of things. Then, you, then on the 15th point, you now say, no, Jesus. Then you now say, is there anybody here? You don't know Jesus. Come and know Jesus. If people come up like that, there is a tendency that you are going to you are going to have false converts. Because for a person to be saved, he must hear a message. Someone say a message. A message. The message is on the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the implication of that to the person. When he hears that message, that he responds. When he responds positively, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells legally in his life. Can we get a believe in amen? What is the message? We share the message with you. It is not different kinds of messages. You know, with the gospel, it's just one. It's just one. And, we, you know, and that's why you must be careful what you call gospel. Now, for example, when you say you're a... I don't want to go this way, but I will go there. When you say you're a gospel, gospel musician, what does that mean? Uh, if you're a gospel musician, you better be talking about the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in your music. Mm. Hallelujah. If you're there saying, we did it. Say, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You are. <laughs> Say, yeah, yeah, whoa, whoa. You are not, you are not. The gospel musician is a preacher. Hallelujah. He speaks about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he edifies and confirms the saints that are not be, that are already believers with the word of Christ. So he, he will say something about righteousness. He will say something about who we are in Christ. That's a gospel musician. Not someone that comes up to the church and says, I'm rich. Oh, God has given me 14. You, you're not a gospel musician. You're, you're a secular artist in church. Hallelujah. Say, is that pastor? You're going below the bed. I'm still in the spirit. Because we must from now, be clear. What is the gospel? We can't call ourselves a gospel musician or a pastor or preacher of the gospel when the message is not, is not this specific. What is the message? That man was in sin. And God sent Jesus Christ into the world. When he came into the world, he lived among the Jews as was spoken by prophecy. And he died on the cross for the Jews. The reason why Jesus Christ died a specific death of on the cross was because of a law in the Jewish community that said, when you sin, you must be hung upon a, tr a cross. That's why he died the death of a cross. He went to the grave. In, the, in hell, he was dead three days. We know that from scripture because the Bible says his body will not see corruption. You see that in Psalms chapter 16. You start to read from verse 10. His body will not see corruption. 
Because he, he also said, the Lord will raise him up. And we see that the Lord raised him up. Because he was raised up, sins were forgiven. The sins of all humanity was forgiven. Can I get a believe in amen? Let me tell you something. When you meet a good man that doesn't know Jesus, and a homosexual that doesn't know Jesus, the message must be the same. If the message is not the same, you've got a problem. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So the message is simple. He became sin. Who knew no sin? The message is simple. God was in Christ. No longer counting the world's sins against them. But imputing the world sin on the person of Jesus. Can we get a believe in amen? Where is all the sins of the world right now? You know, people don't know this. That's why they think God is angry. And we must be loud about it. What did I say? We must be what? Loud, loud about it. Yes, sir. God. God is not angry with a gay man. Yeah? Yes. His sins have been forgiven. Yes. This is the message he needs to hear. When, no, forget about uh, when he hears that message and he says, I believe. The Holy Spirit comes into his heart and gives him a new spirit. When he now has it, and that is why the body of Christ always never really sees sinners get saved. Because when we come on the, on the pulpit, we preach sin as if sin is the cure to sin. Hallelujah. When he becomes a, when he hears the message, he says, yes, I believe that Jesus took my sins. I believe that I'm a new creation. I'm now born of God. He might say it this way. I believe because he's gay. It's no problem. Let him believe the message. When he believes the message, he gets a new heart. A new spirit. He might still be saying, no, no, no. it's okay. It's still okay. It's still okay. He's, he's gay. He's still okay. Then he starts to hear the message of life. He starts to hear the word of God. The message of God's grace. You know what starts happening to his mind? His mind is now renewed. He starts to behold the love of God. Over and over again. Over and over again. What happens to this? I, you, I believe he, his desires change. That's the gospel. That, you, know, you know, I have a lot of my friends who, like I always say, I don't, I'm not angry with them. But they go, well, we will not agree. No gay, no gay. That's not your message. The message is that tell them God is not angry with them. Tell them that God loves them. Before they came onto the world and said, I don't know, God had paid for their sins. Let them know. You are my mouthpiece to tell them the good news. Yes. Not only are you my mouthpiece, you demonstrate my power. You demonstrate my glory. You demonstrate my power. You demonstrate my glory. You are the proof that I am good. Are the proof that I'm good. Woo! So that's the message. We don't change it for anything. We don't look upon the man that is the sinner. We look upon the message that can change. Hallelujah. So, so you know, I'm talking to my friends around the world. Don't get into all these kind of things. Oh, we will not agree. You know, no gay, no, no, like, no uh, bisexual. No. Preach the message. Amen. Preach the message as they behold him as in a mirror. <laughs> they cannot help it. They might start like this. They might start like that. As they behold him as in a mirror. Something starts to happen to them. As they behold him as in a mirror. As they behold him as in a mirror. A metamorphosis happens as they behold him as in a mirror. So don't segment sin. Preach the gospel. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Don't segment sin. What do you do? Preach the gospel. To emphasize our second fact, a man can only be saved when he hears the gospel. And please understand the gospel is the power of God. That's why you may not understand it. The gospel is the power of God. Meaning, when you do your job of preaching the gospel, and the sinner does his job of believing the gospel, the Holy Spirit does his job of coming into his heart. 
Hallelujah. Then he becomes a Christian. So there are three parties involved in the salvation of man. You want to talk about a holistic picture, you know, but three parties involved, basically. The man that preaches. KGV. The unbeliever that hear it and believes. And the Holy Ghost that responded. Hallelujah. So as a preacher of the gospel, preach your own part. And leave the responder and the Holy Ghost to do their part. Can we get a believing in it? Come on, shout hallelujah. And the third fact of the gospel, which is in sync, which we are going to be looking at today, in sync with the um, what we have been sharing. The third irrefutable fact of the gospel is that when a man gets born again, he receives just one, he, he receives just one gift. One. Every other thing we see in his life is a function of the one gift he received. Hallelujah. And when, when a man receives the gospel, he doesn't receive a something. Something does not come into his life. A person comes into his life. That person is the Holy Spirit. Can we get a believing amen? amen? Can we get a believing amen? amen? All right, let's read our Bibles very, very, very quickly. Galatians chapter 3. We have to be very, very fast. Galatians chapter 3. I will start to read from verse 13. Galatians 3 verse 13. Christ has re- and, I, and I shared this last week, so don't get don't get jungled up by that scripture. When it says Christ has redeemed us from the cost of the law, I told you last week he was not talking to you here. He was talking to the Jewish man here because it was the Jewish man that was under the law. You will see where you come in here. Being made a cost for us, talking to the Jewish man because he, the writer was also Jewish. For it is written, cost is everyone that hangeth on the tree. That's the reason why Jesus Christ went to the tree to fulfill the law of Moses. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. When a man is not saved in the Bible, he is called a Gentile. Can we get a believe in amen? amen? So the blessings of Abraham will come upon the Gentiles. Why is this called the blessings of Abraham? He's, it is called the blessings of Abraham because God promised this to Abraham. If you check your Bible, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Although the original thing God said, you will see it in Galatians chapter 3. You know, God did not say, let me say this with you to help you. I will, it's like, I will, I will bless, I will, I will bless you. And I will bless them that bless you and cause them that curse you. In this shall all the ends of the earth be blessed. What did God say? We always know what God really said in the New Testament. God just said this, I will bless thee. And in this shall all the ends of the earth be blessed. Can I get a believe in amen? And what is the blessing? Acts chapter 3 verse 26. The blessing that he promised him is not cars and houses. The blessings that he promised Abraham was that the sins of humanity will be forgiven. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Come on church, hallelujah. Let's look at it. Acts chapter 3. We are going to read verse 25. Remember he's talking to Jews here. He says, ye are the children of the prophets. And of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, very specific, and in thy seed, what did, Je- what did Jesus say? What did God say? In thy seed, all the kindreds of the earth will be. That's what God said. And like, I'm, like, I'm, like in some of our teachings, when we are understanding Genesis, you understand why some things like curses came in. Blair. The ones that are blessed, the ones that are in through you, all the nation of the earth shall be blessed. I will bless them that bless you and cause them that cause you. God doesn't talk like that. That's not his colloquial. That's not his language. God doesn't talk like that. That's why I always tell you, in the new covenant, you hear exactly what God said. And God tells you what he said while this man is talking about it. What did he say? He says, in thy seed, the seed being one, all the ends of the earth shall be blessed. Then verse 26, he explains it. Unto you first, explain the blessing, contextual reading. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus Christ. Say resurrection. It must always be there. Sent him to bless you. What is the blessing? Church, what is the blessing? In, read it from your Bible, so you know you are reading the Bible. What is the blessing? 
In turning every one of you from your iniquities. So the blessing that God was speaking about was the fact that these people, these people who believe as Abraham believed, they have their sins forgiven. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Someone declare my sins are forgiven. Come on, declare that my sins are forgiven. God is not angry with me. God is not mad at me. I have, I have a, I'm in a new covenant. And in the new covenant, my sins and iniquities, he will remember no longer. We are back to Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Verse 14 now. The blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. What is the promise of salvation? Or what is the promise that God promised Abraham? Or what is the promise that God has promised to everyone that believes on Jesus? His Spirit. Say Bible reading. His Spirit. Talk to me. His Spirit. Look at John 7, 37. Jesus spoke about this himself. So you will know what was the gift. You start to read from verse 37. He says to us, In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man test, let him come to me and drink. And you know I always tell you, you need to be careful the way you read the Bible. When he says, If any man test, let him come to me and drink. The normal human man, what is he thinking about? What, yeah, that's not what he's talking about here. And in what this is one of the few places he explains that he's not talking about water. Because you know, if he did not explain, there will be some people today who they will be drinking water. <laughs> saying that it's spiritual water. That Jesus said, if you are thirsty, drink this. That's how error happens. Like when we don't read the gospel in context. Alright. He says. Let him come to me and drink. Verse 38. He that believeth on me. What does it mean to drink in this context? Believe. Okay. You said it, not me. He said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture said, half of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now again, if you're not careful in the way you, what are you thinking about? Belly. Water. Like, okay, is water coming out of your belly? No. When you see scriptures use some words, if you don't understand it, look in context and we explain it. So you don't start thinking, hmm, when I get born again, they say I'll have a belly. And from that belly, river will be coming. No, he ain't talking about water. He's not talking about rivers. He's talking about a person. He was just using words that they could relate with. Hallelujah. Then he now explained it for us in verse 39. But this he spake, this spake he of the Holy Ghost, which they that believe on him should... Which day that believe on him should, when you believe the gospel, listen, let me tell you something. You don't ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Listen to me very carefully. You don't do what? What do you need to see the Holy Spirit in your life? Believe. All a believer can do in the things of the Spirit is receive. Hello? Hello? Say, I receive all that God. Come on, talk. Hey! You know, you, now let me say something to you. Don't, 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 don't let me start to tell you things that are true, like these angels are here. When I say things like that, they're going to like, read it. Pastor, they, when did they enter? Is it after I said I believe? Don't be like that. How many people know that the, the power of the Holy Ghost is here? How many people know that? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I said that because of you, so you have a consciousness. So that you not be like, really, nice message. Oh, no, the, the power of God is here. No, really, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's go. He's, but this, verse 39, this spake he of the Spirit, we they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus Christ was not yet glorified. Focus on the Bible in this church, please. Jesus Christ was not yet what? 
glorified. So when a man gets saved, what does he receive? The Holy Spirit. Let's confirm these scriptures. Look at John chapter 3 verse 5. John chapter 3. Go there quickly. Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus. Say, I'm born of the Spirit. Hey, I'm born of the Spirit. All right. John chapter 3 verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man is born of water and of the Spirit. Let me stop again. When he says born of water, what will normal people be thinking about? Water. But in that rendering, actually, if you see the word there, born of water and of the spirit, that word and there is the word kai in the Greek. It means which is. Which is. So let's go back and read it again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man is born of water, put it here, which shall talk to me, which is the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So the spirit is what a man is born of when he received the gospel. Did we get that? Yeah. Look at verse 6. That which is born of flesh. So it's not telling you the two dimensions of life. There is the human life. Say the human life. Yeah. That which is born of flesh is flesh. Follow me now. That's why when a woman goes to the labor room or the delivery room, she's pregnant. When she gives birth, are we all praying that, Lord, don't let her give birth to hippopotamus? Do we pray all those kind of prayers? Yeah. What, our, ho our, our hopes, are they set on, oh God, this man is not just going to give birth to cow now. How will we, go? Oh, how will we tell the auntie? Do we, do we think like that? We don't think like that. Because you know that law. Either by experience or someone told you you have been there. In, in some countries, people give birth in the, at the bus stop. You have been, you've seen me. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. <laughs> he now tells you a higher law. What is the higher law? That which is born of the spirit is. Come and say, I'm spirit. I'm spirit. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. When I got born again, come on, when I got born again, I received the very nature of God. I received the very life of God. I received the very life of God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, we are going to be talking about somebody called the Holy Ghost. Oh, dear Lord. Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. The Spirit, hey, the Spirit, the Spirit, I'm born of the Spirit. The Spirit, verse 2. Galatians 3, verse 2. The Spirit. The Spirit, I'm born of the Spirit. Look at it, verse 2. This only will I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith. What is he talking about there? When he says receive ye the Spirit, he's talking about receive when you got saved. Because receiving the Spirit is being born again. When you get, when a man hears the gospel, it's the Holy Spirit that comes to live in his heart. Can I get a believe in amen? amen. Alright, let's continue. And that's why the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit has been promised for years to come. And that's why even John the Baptist, the greatest prophet of the Old Testament, what did he say? He said it in John chapter 1 verse 31. He said that God told him that the one whom the Spirit of God will dwell on and abide, that one is the Son of God. Interestingly, he didn't even know that it was his cousin. Imagine the drama. You know, everybody told that John the Baptist was the spiritual one. He used to do very, very funny things. He would go to the wilderness. He would be eating locusts. He would be wearing funny kind of belts. He would be abusing everybody. Brother Viper! So oh, John the Baptist was the spiritual one. He looked in, in the eyes of everyone. He would baptize the dark task collector and all that. But he would keep telling them, I'm not the great one. Even he didn't know the great one. He didn't know. <laughs> but there's somebody. You know he might have insulted Jesus before. I'm just assuming. I'm going for ministry. What's wrong with you? Jesus just shake his head. Father, forgive him. You don't know what he's doing. <laughs> there's somebody coming. He says, this person that's coming, his lace of his shoes, I cannot tie. You would know from the way he was talking, I didn't know it was his cousin. It was his cousin. <laughs> but God said, I don't know 
this person as well. But he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. This guy, when he comes, hmm, the Holy Ghost will come upon him and stay. For every other person, when the Holy Ghost comes, he can't stay. You just leave it, no sin. <laughs> but on this guy, he would stay. He said, that is the Son of God. So in his ministry, you know, he would look, you know, let's crack some jokes and go back. He would take somebody who look at, it can't be you. <laughs> Put him in water to get out and be going with you this time. <laughs> he would look at other people. He would put him in. Bring, I knew his car can even be you, you, that you don't pay your taxes. No. He's about to put another person in the water. He sees somebody coming. Uh -uh. Jesus Joseph. What's going on here? That's my cousin over there. But there's something that's bothering me now. The Holy Ghost has come on that guy. And the Holy Ghost is not going. Oh, he's the son of God. Then his own cousin, he looks at his cousin. The same person he might have abused before. He says, hey, behold the Lamb of God. Because God had already told him, if you see anybody, if you see anybody that, who takes away the sin of the world? He looks at his cousin that he sees all the time. His cousin. He sees him all the time. They are cousins. They are not distant related. His cousin. His mom, Mary, Mary went to um, 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 Elizabeth's house. His cousin. So it's not maybe they see once a year. His cousin. He looks at the cousin. The same person might have despised. He said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Let me tell you something about your life. There is something about you. I said there's something about you. You carry the Spirit of God. Oh, someone didn't get that. You carry the Spirit of God. You carry the Spirit of God. You carry the Spirit of God. That's what makes you special. The believer does not pride in his earthly abilities, in his intellectual abilities. The, the Christian prides in the fact that he is a carrier. He is the dwelling place of God. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. That's it. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells. He dwells in the life of one that receives the gospel. And we see the Jesus Christ. He, he came. He dwelled in him. And let me say, tell you something about the spirit realm. When we talk about the spirit realm, in the spirit realm, things are addressed or they are called based on their function. Things are called based on their... Function. Things are called based on their... If you look at Luke 4 verse 36, for example. Luke 4 verse 36. You will see that Jesus Christ, he was in the synagogue. That's the story before. He was in the synagogue and then he was met with someone that had an unclean spirit. Say unclean spirit. What am I trying to show you? Spirits are called based on what they do. Now this would help you. This would help you. Even in ministering to people, this would help you. In fact, in Mark chapter 9 verse 25, the Bible says Jesus Christ cast out a deaf and dumb spirit. So, spirits are, are, are what spirits are called based on what they... Let me give you a hint. If you see someone who's got an infirmity, he says, for example, he's blind in one eye. How would you minister to that person? Okay, there's a spirit involved. What is the spirit? In the spirit realm, things are called based on what they do. That's why when you see them talk about the Holy Ghost, he has different names. The spirit of truth. Have you, seen, have you heard that before? About the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So you see in Mark chapter 9, verse 25, you hear a, a deaf and a dumb spirit. So when you see someone that is blind, you see a spirit of blindness. That's why Jesus Christ will call the spirit by its name. We know the name of a spirit by its function. Hallelujah. And now we're talking about the spirit that we have received. What is that spirit? Romans chapter 1, verse 4. I want you to read that for us. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Can a man have the Holy Spirit and not be holy? Oh, yeah. All right. 
Can a man have a deaf and dumb spirit and not be deaf? Someone is getting it now. Somebody is getting it now. Hmm. Can somebody have the spirit of truth and not know the truth? He's got the ability. All right. Look, okay, someone doesn't want to read Romans 1 verse 4. I'm going to read it myself. Romans chapter 1 verse 4. And was declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. What, what, what does that spirit, um, scripture call him? The Spirit of holiness. holiness. So tell me, based on the definition of spirits, you know, we have, in, I've introduced into pneumatology, <laughs> understanding of spirits, the spirit life. If we say something is the Holy Spirit, what does this spirit do? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. All right, people are, you know, I think because of the way I respond to people, people are, people are afraid to respond. If you just say something, they say, no, it's not that one. <laughs> All right, let's continue. We'll get there. Luke 7, verse 21. You see, the Bible talks about Jesus Christ ministry, some, some with an evil spirit. What was that spirit in him? What would that spirit be doing? Evil. That's why you see the man of Gadara. Um, Gadara. The madman of Gadara. That's to show you that madness is an evil thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, and, all right, look at, let's see the Holy Ghost. Let, let's see how Jesus spoke about the Holy Ghost. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Because we're talking about the irre irrefutable fact that when a man gets born again, he receives the Spirit of God. Let's see what Jesus says about the Spirit of God. Luke 4, verse 18. Anyone there should read that for us. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to proclaim what? So, you know, one of the things that this Spirit of God will do is that he, principally, he helps you in preaching the gospel. Can I get a believing amen? All right. Can I get a believing amen? Quickly. Let's go to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I just want to verify that point for you. Someone say, I've got the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Quickly. But you will receive power. You will receive power. So normally, if we wanted to, from what we are learning, can we call the Holy Spirit the spirit of power? Yes. So now, look at this. Hey, yeah. Can someone receive the spirit of power and not be powerful? Talk to me now. No. Talk to me now. No. Can some, is it not absurd to be plagued or possessed with the spirit of deafness and to be asking to be deaf? Someone might get me, let, let, you might get me next week. Some people <laughs> get me after the service has ended. Some other people get me just now. Can you have the spirit of deafness fully operational or as functioning in you? And you are asking to be deaf. No. No. You get where I'm going? All right. Wow. Okay. I want you to read again Acts chapter 1 verse 8 for me. But you will receive power. You will receive power when? The Holy Spirit has come upon when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Someone say, I've got power. Church, talk if you believe this. Say, I've got power. I've got, power. I've got the Spirit of God. I have, I have power. That power is at work in me. Church, talk to me. That power is at work in me. I believe the gospel. That power is at work in me. I'll show you how to use this power. I'll show you if we have the time. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. What else will happen to you? You will be my witnesses in what? Jerusalem. In, in Judea. And all parts and ends of the world shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So one of the first things we see that Jesus is talking about this power that you receive is that he helps you to witness to people. Can we get a believing amen? amen? The Holy Spirit helps you to tell people the gospel. Can we get a believing amen? amen? We'll talk about power later if we have the time. I want to share with you one scripture because I want to break all the myths about the, you know, there is something that we call the myths of the spirit life so that you will not be deceived. When you understand this spirit life, people cannot deceive you. 
You will know if a message is from God, if it's not from God. You will know where the Holy Spirit is moving, let me put it that way, if you understand this message I'm teaching. Yeah. You know how people can get deceived by drama? When I mean drama, like, <laughs> and all those kind of things. Yes. I, well, we have to break it down to let you know exactly who the person of the Spirit is. Yes. Hallelujah. All right, let me sh let, let's share this one because very, very important. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Some people have always wondered, what did Jesus mean here? Is it that the Holy Spirit is wicked? Is it that the Holy Spirit does not forgive people? You know, people, a lady, I, I, I stood, you know why do we break up all these things that look like simple scriptures to you? Let me tell you why. I stood in front of a lady to minister to her because I wanted her to speak in tongues. And then I laid hands on her. She would shake and all those things, but she wouldn't speak in tongues. That was strange. So I, I, I stood her up. I said, what's the problem? She said, there's something wrong. You know, I just feel that my, my grandma was the holiest person I ever knew. She was an Anglican, but she never spoke in tongues. She was my role model. If she never spoke in tongues, and I knew she craved for many years to have the Holy Ghost, but she never had it. What, what, I'm not, I don't think I'm good enough for this Holy Ghost. You know, she now said something like, I'm thinking that because I'm not good enough, if I do something now, I, the Holy Spirit can get angry. I don't want him to kill me. That's the reason why I don't want to receive the Holy Ghost. Then we sat her down and taught her much more. And then she received the Holy Ghost. That's why we break down all these simple, simple things. Look at Luke chapter 12. Because if you don't know which is... Okay. Luke chapter 12 verse 10. Are we all there? Are we all there, church? All right. In Luke chapter 10, it says, And whosoever shall speak against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. Are we there? But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven. So you look at that scripture and say, hmm, Jesus is okay. God is a good of love. This Holy Spirit, he has forgiveness issues. No. What is he talking about then? You know what, who, you know why the Holy Spirit, why he makes this statement, when you understand the gospel. You will start to say, now, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to point people to Jesus in his death and resurrection. Anyone that does not believe that message cannot be born again, cannot be saved, and then experiences eternal judgment. That is the only sin for which you cannot be forgiven. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to point to Jesus in his death and especially his resurrection. Are you getting it now? That's his ministry as you soon see. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit principally is to point you to the person of Jesus, not to himself. And so when you do not believe on him or believe on his message, there is no forgiveness. Can we get a believe in amen? amen. That, because I picked, because when we talk about the Holy Spirit, I picked up that scripture so that we would understand, we would understand that when it comes to the Holy Spirit, it's not as if the Holy Spirit is someone that is looking at you and ensuring that if you sin, he wants to deal with you. No, that's not it. Which we'll see much more in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. All right. Now, there's another thing I want you to get about the Spirit. Remember, this is almost like what we call pneumatology. If you know, Bible school is pneumatology. We are talking about spirit life. So, another thing you must understand is this. The Spirit and the Word agree. The, now see, this is where the body of animal shout. You know, enter my shout. This is where the body of Christ misses it a lot. The spirit cannot say what the word will not agree with. So the word of God and the spirit of God, they are one voice. That's why, if you don't know this, that's why somebody can have the temerity to say things like. He, he had a vision of the Spirit of God. Where would the Spirit of God say he saw believers in heaven? That, I don't want to know the person that saw the vision. It's not personality. That cannot be true. The reason it cannot be true is because the Word of God says a believer cannot be in hell because he is one with the Spirit. Hallelujah. If you don't know this, you know, you know people come like, hmm, the Spirit of God is telling me there's some people here. Mm. 15 pounds in your leg pocket. You say, oh, that's the father talking to me. 
34 pounds in the right pocket. God is saying, add it. And come and drop it. Is that the way God talks about offering in the word? He says, if any man will give, let him give, not of necessity, not grudgingly. That's the Spirit's voice. For God loves a cheerful giver. So when you see something like that, you can say, mm, brother, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why you must understand the point. The Spirit and the Word agree. No, there is no more where we, there is nothing, there is nothing deeper than the Word. There is no realm the Spirit to take you that is deeper than the Word. No, 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 no. no. That is a wrong type of deepness. That's not the deepness of the Spirit. Listen, I'm saying it again. No depth in the Spirit is outside the Word. That is why people get deceived when they are looking for something outside the Word. You know people like all these kind of things outside the Word? You know when which someone just wakes up and he looks at the sky and he just sees in the sky. John, I love you. You not say yes. Ah, God loves me. No. The word tells you that you are the beloved of God. Be okay with that. That is how people get into error. One of the ministries that has misled a lot of people is the prophetic ministry. Ah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Why am I doing this to you? Uh, number one, I don't want you to do it. Live like that. I know. The, I'm shouting it. The spirit, if you want to understand the spirit, if you want to understand this spirit life, it's not mysterious. The spirit points to a person. The spirit and the word agree. The spirit will never say what the word has not said. The spirit will not say what the word has not agreed with. If you want to know the spirit life, if you want to know the voice of God clearly, easily, read the word that he wrote. That is his lingua. You will never hear in the epistles something like, I'm writing to you, you know, bastard, idiot. Come. That's how you enter hell. The spirit does not have that lingua. He doesn't have the lingua of condemnation. I don't hear what I'm talking about. The spirit does not have that. If you don't bring that money here, now you know there are some people here. God is saying, give, give, give. You don't want to give. That's how people die. You got you. you Come out of the, of, the, of the church now, a cow will hit you just because of disobedience. That's not the spirit's language. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And you see, like I've said, a lot of people have misunderstood the presence of the spirit. That's why we are having this, this kind of teaching. They've been misunderstood the presence of the who is the spirit of God? Who is he? How does he talk? What does he say? Can he say these kind of things? You know, some people even say things like, you know what, Saul was the one that God chose. And you know, Saul, because of one thing that Saul did, God got angry with Saul and cut off Saul from the lineage. And then G. David was the afterthought to be the king of Israel. That's not true. That's not true. They saw it that way, but that's not the reality. How, what is the reality? The reality says, that the scepter will not depart from Judah. Meaning that the king must come from Judah. But what did the people of Israel do? They asked for a king. Now, according to the law, when a man commits a sin, a particular sin that he gives birth to bastards, meaning he sleeps with somebody he's going to sleep with. Now, Judah slept with his son's wife. They gave birth to a lineage. He says, according to the law of Moses, those people were not meant to enter the temple for 10 generations. That is the reason why David was not anointed when and so for So it was on the ninth generation that Israel asked for a king. God said, no, no, no. Israel, no, no, no. It was in the ninth generation they asked for a king. What happened in the 10th generation? When it was the 10th generation, the time of the bastard reign and the bastard cause was over. Jesus, could, God could officially anoint the king of Israel. But if you do not, why am I saying all these things? If you do not know the spirit of God by the spirit of the New Testament, you will be deceived. Can I get a believe in amen? And David came and became king and he was the will of God as it were. Can I get a believe in amen? All right, let's continue. John 5, 39. I must show you that the spirit, this is the most important thing I want to say today. The spirit and the word agree. 
be disciplined to know that the spirit and the word of Christ must agree. Look at John 5 verse 39. What does it say? John 5 39. Search the now listen, don't get confused. Search the scriptures. You think that in the scriptures you have eternal life. Uh -huh. And it is they that bear witness They are they that testify of me. What does the scripture testify of? Jesus. Jesus. What does the scripture testify of? Jesus. Now open your Bible. Let's look at John 15, 26. So we see the word of God. The scriptures testify of Jesus. Let's see the Holy Spirit's ministry. When the helper comes, the helper comes whom, I will send to you, who I will send to you of the Father, of the, Father the, Spirit of truth, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. You know, you know she said, bear witness. If you look at it in the King James, it says, because it's the, it's the word I want to get with, he will testify. He will do what? He will do what? So we see on one hand that the word of God testifies of who? The Spirit of God testifies of who? Jesus. So, the spirit realm is not a realm for you to just be misbehaving and saying things that the world does not agree with. Can we get a believing amen? amen? Can we get a believing amen? amen? Now, let me tell you something. How do we know something is by the Spirit of God? You know, I'm telling you that we are talking about the, the third irrefutable law, fact of the gospel of Christ. Which is that when a man gets born again, he receives the Holy Spirit. So we are understanding this person of the Holy Spirit. So I just asked you a question now. How do we know something is of the Spirit of God? Let us go to the scriptures. We must understand. Let me give you the answer first. You know what is of the Spirit of God by what is said, not by what is done. Listen, chop. You know, I'm saying all this thing now. Everybody, listen. We know what is of the Spirit of God by what is said, not by what is done. Do you know why? In the last days, there will be funny miracles and signs. Are you hearing me? Church, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? We know what is of the Spirit of God based on what is, based on what is said. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The Lord. I said hallelujah. The Lord. Are we in verse 1 now? Yes. All right. Beloved. It's talking to you. It's talking to you. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Yes, yes. Are you listening? But try the spirit. He tells you how to try spirits. What did he, he tells you how to do what? He tells you how to do what? How to try spirits. So a, a new creation ought to know how to try spirits. So the spirit realm is not something that you are not aware or acquainted with. Are we together? Yes. Believe, beloved. Don't, don't you like it? Don't you say the way the Bible talks to you? Don't say idiot. It says beloved. Some say I'm beloved. I'm beloved. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. Come on, God loves me. I'm the beloved of God. God loves me. God loves me. Glory to God. That coach the back of Jesus. Hmm. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Now listen. Because there are many false prophets that have gone into the world. Hereby, know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Follow me now. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that has come into the world and is already here. Can I get a believe in amen? amen? How do we know the spirit of God? What is said? Every and what is not just what, what is said. What is said is based on the person of Jesus. Christ. So you see that a person 
can do miracles. Listen, he can do miracles, but the message is not of Christ. He says this happy, no sentiment. That's how you know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Let's go and read it all. Come on. Because you, you must learn, you must know the spirit of God. That's our agenda in this meeting. All right, look at this four. It's supposed to be a shouting round, but because of our time, we have to run. Ye are of God. Say, I'm of God. Say, says, little children, and I've overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak. They are of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. That word of God there means we are born of God. We originated from him. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that knoweth not God heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The spirit of error does not point to the person of Christ, his death and his resurrection. Are you hearing me? When you want to know where the spirit of God is manifesting in his glory, it is in what he said. It is in what is. It is in what is. So don't always be after what is done. You're growing now. You are after what is said. The spirit of Christ is known in the midst of people based on what is said. Now, for example, if we're in a meeting praying and someone says, I want to prophesy, listen, because we're training you. And the person says, oh, there is somebody here. God is saying to me, he's angry with you. He's very, very ah, thank you, Lord. Is very angry with you because he has been talking to you that you should stop doing what you are doing you will not hear he's angry and because of this thing that you are doing it's time to tell you be careful you can die tomorrow and if you die tomorrow you we all know where you are going now does that look does that sound religious yes it sounds religious yes. is that the spirit of god no. that's what i'm trying to get across to you the spirit of god points you to christ his finished work. In the midst of sin, the Spirit of God will tell you who you are. Hello? Hello? In the midst of sin, the Spirit of God tells you who, what Christ has done. In the midst of sin, the Spirit of God must remind you of who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to run. Hallelujah. So we scrutinize what we call the spirit realm by what people are saying. Are you hearing? Is someone hearing? Yes. Okay. Let's look at what Jesus said about the Spirit of God. This is, this is what we call pneumatology. You can give it to anybody. This is a pneumatology class. John chapter 14. Just because of time, we'll have love to demonstrate the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God is the Spirit of light. It's the Spirit of power. And it can be demonstrated. Amen. You know? It's the Spirit of, it's the, it's, it's the spirit of power. He can be communicated. All right. Okay. All right, let's go to John chapter 14. We must know the spirit. If we are going to fellowship, we must understand the spirit that we have received so that we are not hoodwinked. Look at verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you for pneumatology. The spirit of God. Everybody concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. The spirit of God abides with the Christian for how long? For how long? For how long? Can the Spirit of God leave a person? Now let me tell you something, so that you understand it. I think it's in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13. It says, when a man is born again, he is joined to the Lord. You know, he's joined. Is the Greek word kalo. It's more than um, glue. It's actually where we get the Old Testament word cleave. Hallelujah. When a man is born again, he is one with the Father. If that man goes to hell, God has to go with him. I don't get what I'm talking about. That's why it's not possible for a Christian to go to hell. He is one with the Father. They are now inseparable. You know when Jesus Christ was saying that, you know Jesus was talking about God, and he said, I hate divorce. Then he said, let, let it be known that a man will leave his father and his mother and will cleave to a woman, and they shall become one flesh. He now says this, he is speaking about the mystery of Christ and the church. When a man becomes born again, he is inseparable from God. He is one with him in the spirit. One, not two. So this is not the spirit of God and this is you. No, you are one. You are, the, you are one with the Father. Hallelujah. 
I said hallelujah. So please understand it. What are we trying to show you here? When the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God, when a man receives the Spirit of God, that Spirit can never go. Forget what religion tells you. That Spirit cannot go. That Spirit cannot leave. Can I get a believing amen? amen? You don't receive, no, no, you did not receive the Spirit of God based on deeds. So you cannot use the Spirit of God based on deeds. That's the thing about the Spirit. That's the thing about the Spirit of God that we don't understand. Can I get a believing amen? amen. So I have received the Spirit of God. Look, 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 look at that scripture, verse 10, verse 16. That would abide with you forever. Look at verse 17. Even the Spirit of truth. Look at that. He tells us another name for this Spirit. And I told you in the Spirit realm, it, you are described by what you do. The Spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. So there is nobody that is, if a man is not born again, he cannot have the Holy Ghost. Are you getting it? Whom the world cannot receive. Look at that mystery. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him not. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Who was dwelling with them as at that time? Jesus. But what did he say? The Spirit was dwelling with them and later shall be in them. What is he trying to say? The Spirit of God and the person of Jesus and the person of God, they are one. That's why it's not even possible for the Spirit of God to say something that the Word of God is not in agreement with. Can we get a believing amen? I said, can we get a believing amen? amen? Hallelujah. All right. A couple of other points. Let's look at verse 26 of the book of, of John. The Holy Ghost. John 16. John 14, verse 26. I want to run now, but I need you to get it. You need to see this. Wow. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, Remember I told you, in the spirit realm, it's by what you do that you are called. The comforter. Say, Jesus, Jesus. the spirit of God, spirit of my, comforter, my comforter, my standby, my intercessor, my strengthener, my helper. Shout hallelujah. He said, the, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Now let's put it in context. When he says he will teach you all things, he's not saying that in context, it's not saying that you teach you biography. Oh, no, no, it's teach, you teach you biology or chemistry. That word, all things, you can, it's a word that actually means in the original rendering, all these things. All which things, you go in context, all these things concerning Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the same thing with, I can do all things with Christ that strengthens me. You must be careful of the context. What is the context? The man was saying, I know how to abase and abound. What is abase and abound? Abase was, is, anytime he didn't have money, he knows how to enjoy himself. Anytime he has money, he knows how to enjoy himself. Then he says, I can do all these things through Christ that strengthens me. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Context saves you from error. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which the Father will send me to you in my name, he shall teach you all things, all these things concerning me, and bring into your remembrance whatsoever things I have said to you. So we see that the Spirit of God in his ministry is to reveal the person of Jesus. Is to reveal the person of Jesus. Is to reveal the person of So let's see some other things that the Spirit of God does. John 16, verse 5. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask me whether I go it. But because I have said I'm going to him, your heart is filled with sorrow. Look at verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you this. Except, except I go to the... It is expedient for you that I go away. If I do not go away, the comforter will not come. But when I depart, I will send him to you. Look at his ministry. He says, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Say, reprove the world of sin. Reprove is the word you are used to in this church, the Greek word eleko. Proof that gives conviction. Hallelujah. He will help you, he will let the believer know that he is a sinner. He will reprove the word of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. Look at what he's saying. Of sin because they believe not on me. So the sin that the Holy Spirit reproves the unbeliever of is believing Jesus. 
What the Holy Spirit convicts the unbeliever of is that he should believe in Jesus, giving him proof that he is a sinner and he needs the gospel. Can I get a believe in amen? amen? Of righteousness, look at it, he says, of righteousness, because I go to the Father and now you see me no more. Meaning, after I go to the Father, righteousness is available for them that receive it, that can receive it. Let's move on now. Judgment, because the priest of this world is judged, meaning that Satan will not change in his ministry. His, his own ministry is already finalized. He's been judged already. Glory to God. He said, I have many things to say to you, but I'm not going to say them now. I'll be, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into how many truths? When we say all truth, what, what do we mean by all truth? All these truths. So he would explain further where I stopped. Praise the living Jesus. I said, praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. He would explain about the person. He now says in that verse 14, 13, he will guide you to all truth, for he shall speak. Say the Holy Ghost has a voice. So the Holy Spirit speaks. Say, I have hearing ears. He says he will speak whatsoever he hears, and he will show you things to come. So the Holy Spirit shows, say shows. So we, we, we see that the Spirit of God has a ministry of what? Speaking and showing you things concerning Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I receive, I receive revelation knowledge. Revelation. When I look into the word of God, I receive, I receive. the revelation knowledge. I'm going to conclude tonight with the script of 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16 to help you know where is the dwelling place of the Christian, of the, of, of the Spirit of God. Where is the dwelling place of the, of the Spirit of God? Look at 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16. Someone declare, I'm the, I, am, I am the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. I am the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit of God dwells in you. Where does the Spirit of God dwell? Church, where does the Spirit of God dwell? A lot of people are struggling with these scriptures. The next verse, and I'll I, I, I share that with you so that we can end this service. He says, if any man defile the temple of him, of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. We temple ye are. If you do not read this well, follow me now, we're about to close. If you don't read this well, you think God kills people. But now, let me show you something. Verse 17. Are we all here? Yes. Are we all awake? Are you looking at me? He said, if any man defile. Now that word defile is the Greek word fitero, which means to pollute, to defile. You know, that's, so, if any man defile, pollute, the temple of God, how does a man pollute the temple of God? Through false messages. You are defiled when you open up your you are defiled when you open up yourself to wrong messages. If you're not listening to grace, the gospel of God's grace, you are defiling yourself. The person preaching to you is defiling you. Alright. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall that word shall is the Greek word defile. Him shall, that word is defiled, him shall God destroy, which is the, which is the same word, fitero. So let's read it the way it was really translated. If any man defile the temple of God, him defile, God defile. It doesn't make sense, right? The nearest person that gets the, the translation is the amplified. I just want to show you something. Then we close. Because it's good. Let's read it together in context. I'm going to read. Um, okay. All right. It says, Do you not know and understand that you, the church, are the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God dwells permanently in you, collectively and individually? If anyone destroys the temple of God, corrupting it with false doctrine, God will destroy the destroyer. For the temple of God is holy, and that is who you are. What do you say God will do? God will destroy. Now, who is the destroyer? No. The message is the destroyer, not the person. The message is the destroyer, not the person. And God shows you in the scripture before how he will destroy the destroyer. Let's go. First Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 15. 
If any man's work, the work is the destroyer. If any man's work shall be born, he shall suffer loss. He himself shall be saved, yet so by fire. What did he say will happen to the work? The work will suffer loss. He said it will go through what? Fire. And it will be what? Burnt. That's how Jesus destroys the destroyer. So when God says he will, the one who defiles, he will defile. He, he's saying the one, the message that destroys, he will take away. Are you not glad that in this season and this our time, God is raising new people, not new people, but men with the word of God who are actually restoring the truth of God in our generation. Are you excited about that this evening? Are you glad that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God dwells in you? Please rise upon your feet and give God all the praise this evening. Come on, give God all the praise this evening. Come on, give God all the praise this evening. Come on, bless the name of the Lord this evening. Because you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God dwells in you. You can declare in your life, no more defiling. No more defiling for me. No more defiling. I'll keep hearing the message of the gospel. I'll keep hearing the message of the good news of Christ. No more defiling. No more defiling. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God dwells in me. The Spirit of God dwells in me. I carry the very nature. I carry the very life. Thank you, Lord. I carry the very ability of God. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to give you one minute. You're going to do something now. Like I shared with you in the discipleship class. The Spirit of God that dwells in you is the very nature and life of God. The very life that God has that makes God God, that makes God light, that makes God power, that makes God truth. That very power that raised up Christ from the dead, he now tabernacles inside who? Me. Church, inside who? Me. You're about to do something now. Inside who? Me. How many people like to live a healthy life? Church, talk to me. Yes. If you don't like it, no problem. Yes. Close. How many people want to live a healthy life? Yes. How many people do not want to be sick all the time and weak in their bodies? How many of you that are like that are Christian here? You're Christians, yeah. All right. Now, listen. The Spirit of God that dwells in you, where does it dwell? In you. Where, where does it dwell? In you. When the Bible says the Spirit of God dwells in you, that same Spirit of God is the Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead. Now, if there be anything in your body, the Spirit of God will not come and do anything. Listen. The Spirit of God will not do anything about it till you do something about it. Can I get a believe in amen? amen? Because the Bible says to us, the Spirit of God and the Word of God agree. Resist the devil. What will happen? Will Church, what will happen? Will what will happen? Will and so if you're somebody, you don't like to be weak, you don't like to be sick, or you are tired of it, and you have heard in this service that the Spirit of God dwells in you, what do you do? You respond to this message. How do you respond to this message? The Spirit of God dwells in me. The life of God dwells in me. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, sickness, you are not permitted here. Diabetes, you are not permitted here. Oh, stroke is not permitted in my life. Sickness is not permitted here. That life, body, speak to your body. Body start to respond to the life of God. Body start to respond. My body responds to the life of God. Healing flows in this body. If you know you're okay, because I'm healthy in my body. I'm healthy in my body. My body is sound by the Holy Ghost that dwells inside of me. My body is sound. Come on, declare these things. Come on, exercise your authority. Exercise your authority in your home. If you have children over here, you can exercise your authority. If they are little kids, exercise your authority. Sickness is not permitted amongst your kids. Exercise your authority. You are the very dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. This body, this body is quickened by the Holy Ghost. This body is quickened by the Holy Ghost. This body is quickened, it's quickened. Glory to God, it's quickened. Sickness is not permitted.
permitted here. Disease is not permitted here. I have hearing ears, I have seen eyes. I have a new creation. I have the life of God. I have the ability of God. Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That spirit that is in you is the spirit of power. It's the spirit of power. It's the spirit of power. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. It's the spirit of power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 The spirit of God is the spirit of power. The spirit of power. Dear Lord, the spirit of power. Come and bring the Holy Ghost. The spirit of power. Come on now, the spirit of power. 